Okay, let's go ahead and solve this basic algebra equation. Now, for some of you out there, you might be saying, well, that's not that basic to me because I'm not quite sure what to do with these square roots. That's probably, uh, for those of you who don't know how to solve this, this is probably the part of this um, equation that might be a little bit intimidating. But don't be intimidated. And what you don't want to do is to go get your calculator and turn these into decimals. You never want to change square roots into decimals unless you're specifically told to do so. Now, you might be asked to find a decimal approximation of the final answer. That's perfectly fine. But your first uh, step is not to change these to decimals and work within decimals. Okay, so we need to know a little bit about square roots. And I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And I have an excellent math help learning program. Let me just tell you about it very, very briefly. Uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're taking an exam and it has math on it, for example, like the GED, SAT, ACT, a teacher certification exam, uh, there's a ton of different exams that people have to take. And oftentimes there is a math section so I can help you prepare so you can successfully pass those exams. I also have a great homeschool learning program. So if you're in any one of these different categories, of course, if you're struggling with your math course, I can help you out as well. So one little quick uh, uh, tip here. Okay, If you're not taking outstanding math notes, you're really doing yourself a disservice in terms of being a successful math student. This is probably one of the most common weak areas that I have found over decades of teaching math is students don't take uh, notes that are really good enough. Okay, so double down on your note taking. Things will get much better, but I'm going to leave uh, links to my notes, okay, in the description of this video. Of course, uh, the link to my math help program as well. All right, let's get into this problem. And before we solve this actual problem here, let's just go ahead and, and switch these numbers out. Uh, and we'll do an example problem, but let's get rid of these square roots. Let's do an easier example. So this is x times the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 6. So let's just put some easier numbers here. How about we just go x times 2 is equal to 6. Now, you might be saying, well, this is, you know, looks kind of funny in terms of algebra. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we could write this problem, okay, as the square root of 2 x equals the square root of 6 like this as well. Okay, so this is one way to see it. Sometimes you'll see it this way. Some, when you're dealing with radicals or square roots, sometimes you'll see the variables in front of it. But this is definitely kind of confusing. All right, so really what we have here is 2 times x. So we'll write it this way. 2x is equal to 6. Okay, so my question to you is, how do we solve this equation right here? Okay. Well, if you said, well, don't we divide both sides of the equation by 2? Well, you would be absolutely correct. So x would be equal to 6 divided by 2, which, of course, is 3. Okay, so if you understand that, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and a check mark because you basically have the right idea. This is a simple one-step equation, but we need to deal with these square roots, okay, in this particular problem. But what effectively, we're going to be doing uh, these steps here. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so if you're saying, all right, well, if, uh, to solve for x, if this is the coefficient, should I just divide both sides of the equation by the square root of 2? Yes, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to divide both sides of the, of the equation by the square root of 2. So we get our answer is x is equal to the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 2. Now, if you think that is right, but matter of fact, if you got that right, I will go ahead and give you another happy face and a check mark. However, if you gave this to me uh, as your final answer and I'm grading your paper, unfortunately, I'd have to take some points off and you might have this kind of expression. Okay, now why is that? Well, because you do not ever want to leave a square root like this in the denominator. Okay, this is an irrational number. Okay, so we can't, this is a no-no in mathematics, right? We're taking a square root of 6 and we're dividing by the square root of 2. This is an irrational number. So again, you know, to be redundant, right, we can't, this is a, uh, we're on the right track here. However, we need to simplify this. So what are uh, some ways we can simplify this? Well, the easiest way to handle this uh, scenario, basically we have to, you know, get it out of this form is we need to know this particular property. And I'm going to write it out, and I'm going to show you this. 
So the square root of a over the square root of b is equal to the square root, one big square root, over a divided by b. And this can help us out here because here I can say, well, I have the square root of 6 over the square root of 2. This is the same thing as one big square root as 6 divided by 2. All right, so 6 divided by 2, the last time I checked that was 3, so this is uh, equal to the square root of 3. So x is equal to the square root of 3. That's a perfectly fine answer, okay? And that's what you want to do. However, the key to doing this problem is you got to know a little bit about the properties of square roots, okay? Again, stuff you need to know in algebra, but, you know, hopefully not that difficult. Uh, again, what you you're, you know you don't want to do is to change you know go into your calculator and change the square root of two into a decimal and the square root of six into a decimal because your your answer as soon as you do that uh, you're you're basically um, going to get an estimation you're gonna, you're not going to get a perfectly correct answer the x equals the square root of three is what we call an exact answer if you give me a decimal of an irrational number. That's an approximation, so you've got to be very, very careful here. Again, you know, uh, in algebra, in mathematics, it's all about learning one thing at a time. That's why I'm, a, you know, I'm a big stickler on note taking because you're learning a lot of different things. Okay, if you're not taking notes and practicing these skills, you will get lost. So always think of math as like a staircase. This is a pretty poor staircase, but you get the idea as learning one skill at a time. If you try to skip and you're like, oh, I don't need to know this, and then you expect to do well up here, it's not going to work because you have a shaky foundation. Right? And that's where I think a lot of people get frustrated in math is they, you know, you, you don't, you have to be paying attention consistently. And, you know, all, you're going to need all these skills to keep climbing up that math uh, staircase, if you will. Okay, so one skill at a time. And these skills are not overly difficult, but just take them one thing at a time. And hopefully this little video helped uh, you know you out with square root uh, equations if you're you know studying something like this and if that is the case please consider smashing that like button that definitely helps me out and if you're new to my YouTube channel please consider subscribing I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years have over a thousand plus math videos and I'm posting content all the time basic to advanced math so my goal is always to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way and if you like my teaching style well, please take advantage of those videos that I've posted and the ones I will post. Uh, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.